Hello there, neighborinos. Let's start with the titular story of the night. Streaming Steam VR games to your Oculus Quest. So, it's only been a couple days since, since the Quest came out. However, there is already a workaround to do this. Okay. So, a couple things need to happen in order for this to actually work out. First, your Quest needs to be put in developer mode. And then that way you can install apps from unknown sources. Then you can download the VR Ridge APK and the Android ADB tool. These will allow you to actually operate this third party system. Next up, you need the RiftCat desktop app. While there's two versions of it, one for free and the other is $15. But the free version is only going to let you do it for a few minutes. Because $15... Personally, I believe $15 is more than enough money to justify well, what you're about to do. Because you'll have access to a number of games, well, some of which you can find for free on Steam. I think. I haven't checked out there the VR library in a while, but last time I did, there were quite a few free games. Anyway, $15 worth the investment. Okay, so first things first, you'll want to run VR Ridge on the Quest, and then assuming you don't have a PC VR headset attached to your computer, you'll want to run RiftCat and then use the, the great big play button to have it launch Steam VR. That way, everything is going to work out perfectly. Well, semi-perfect. There are a couple problems with it. Uh, those are documented in the following video. Let's watch. It's still in preview, so it's not optimized yet. It is um, not fully functional, not fully supported. Um, but if you are doing it, there are some other limitations as well. For example, as you can see here, I'm having trouble interacting with things because the right touch controller for the Quest is not accepting my input whenever I click the right stick. RiftCat tricks Steam into thinking that you're using Vive controllers, so by default that input method doesn't seem to be working correctly with the right controller. The only way around this that I have discovered is using an OpenVR input emulator program to swap my hands inside the game so that my inputs with the left touch controller are interpreted as the right touch controller then allowing me to interact with things. This is only a temporary way to bypass the problem because the game is not really that playable I if I were to continue with those trouble. settings. What can I do for you, friend? There are some other issues with the button mapping that will probably get ironed out as future additions come out for RiftCat on Quest, but for something that launched the day after the headset became available, this is a surprisingly good solution that I assume will get better with time. Wasn't that a hoop? Okay, so next story, not as big as streaming Steam to your Quest, obviously, but it's, it's still something. So... The touch controllers for the new Rift S and the Quest, they've been coming off for a couple people, but Facebook does have a solution for that. So if it is loosening or shifting or whatever during your normal play, they do recommend not only ensuring that the battery covers in place, but making sure that the, the, wrist, the wrist straps are, well, secure, but obviously not too tight because you don't want to cut off circulation. As, as long as you're able to do that, you likely won't feel as necessary, it likely won't feel as necessary to grip the controllers as tightly so those, those covers won't come off. That being said, you shouldn't have to worry that much about them coming off, but I guess just don't hold them too tightly. Okay, so this next story doesn't really seem like much, 
However, when you extrapolate out the details, it could mean quite a bit. So, China's gaming market accounts for 312 million gamers, and that number is expected to grow to 354 by 2023, analysts predict. That would generate $16 billion in revenue. That being said, I'm pretty sure anybody would tell you that a developer would be, well, they, they'd be kind of stupid not to try to dip their feet in there, into that $16 billion money pit right there. That being said, the biggest question of the day is, how are they getting their games? Well, chances are, like the rest of us, they're getting them from Steam. And right now, Steam is highly uncensored in China. You, you could get a copy of GTA, of GTA 5 on Steam, but you won't be able to get PUBG. It, you will have to instead settle for Game for Peace, the pro-China equivalent. It doesn't show blood or guts or gore of any kind. And, well, it, it's highly censored. Let, let's just say that. So, that being said, depending on how these developers want to approach things, that could result in highly censored games for the rest of us. Simply because that 354 million number I mentioned, that would pass the total population of the United States. And I'm, I'm willing to bet that not everyone in the United States is a PC gamer. Just, just a wild guess. But that being said, the Epic Game Store China, or Steam's biggest competitor at the moment is of course also launching in China with an uncensored version. And that may cut Steam out of the market as, well, our Steam. Because Valve is working on a pro-China model that would follow all the censorship guidelines. Which, of course, would ban Steam from the rest of us. Or, well, it, it would ban the core version of Steam from China, likely. And depending on whether or not Epic Games plans on working into virtual reality games, that could very easily lead to highly censored games in the future, as the Epic Games Store is not only owned by Epic, but Epic is owned by Tencent, a, well, in, in majority. Tencent is a Chinese game developer, which, of course, likely reports to the Chinese government. So, we could face a for the rest of us. So, China's hold may be bigger than we think. I believe that's a good place to end the video. If you guys liked it, let me know. If you hated it, let me know. And as always, don't forget to tell me how I'm such a horrible person for giving you all this news. Ta-ta for now. If you made it this far, don't forget to check me out next time when I'm going to be talking about Sony's global head of R&D, Dodic Mallison talking about the PlayStation VR 2.